So, so what are your feelings? Because uh, cribbing is one of those enigmatic conditions in horses, and there's still so much that we have to learn. And as I said, this isn't a this isn't a scientific presentation, but it's always nice to sort of pick your brain. What are your thoughts now about you know what is going on in cribbing horses, given everything that that has been done and, and the things we still don't know? Well, I'm very much against the idea that the horse is self-medicating. Mm -hmm. uh, because um, in the first place, horses do not salivate when they crib. And I did that experiment because I knew you couldn't do it in the UK. You couldn't put holes mm. in horses salivary uh, ducks. But we had you know, donated horses who were lame and so probably should be put down. So before we did that, we would put in, I had a nice surgeon who um, would do this, and then we could count drops of saliva when the horses were eating hay, when they were eating grain, when they were cribbing. And they just don't produce saliva when they crib because they salivate when they chew, and okay. they're not chewing when they crib. Uh, so that, but people are still, will say, oh yes, that's why horses um, crib. And it's true that horses, some horses at least, have more ulcers if they're cribbers than if they're non-cribbered, <coughs> but that doesn't always hold up either. Yeah. So, so, yeah, because I mean, one of the things, and um, it was Christine Nickel, again, you know, if, if people are listening and they don't know Christine, she's somebody, a researcher, people should look up her work as well. Yeah. Um, and she she was um, she taught me behavior at Bristol. So again, one of these people that inspired me. But um, but yeah, she proposed this idea that the horses might be trying to um, uh, sort of uh, produce saliva as a result. And coincidentally, she and I happened to be working on gastric ulcers and treatments for gastric ulcers with horse, the cribbing horses. Um, and she was doing work. I think that was sponsored by Waltham. I encountered um an old school friend actually who was a jockey and he asked me about whether or not um i'd ever noticed if horses cribbed less when they were on the chalk downs because he thought they did and i said well i don't think about it and then again you know sort of looking looking into the literature couldn't find anything and then i found um a book by mayhew a victorian vet in the uk who was quite a famous vet in his day and in that he sort of uh, he talks about one of the treatments for cribbing is salt bark and chalk in the manger and i was thinking whoa you know here we go so he's talking about it um there it is you know in the victorian age where you know they weren't doing any research but you had people who just watched and made observations and i, I think there's an enormous amount of that we can still learn from that and certainly generate hypotheses um and, you know, we, we did a trial where we, I, went, I remember going out to the chemist and buying tons of Rennies to try on some of these horses before we found a company who would make up the uh, formulation. And we did see a reduction. But I've spoken to the people who make Gastrogard and nobody reports Gastrogard ever. And Gastrogard, again, those people who don't know, that's the thing that in, inhibits proton, this proton pump inhibitor. So it reduces acidity in the stomach. And you know that's that's sort of what chalk does, and and these other things. But nobody reports gastrogard reducing cribbing. Right. Yeah. So you know, so it, as you say, it can't be, you know, the sign. I mean, so so what do you think is going on with the cribbing? And, and I've got my pet theories, but <laughs> <laughs> um, I wish I had a brilliant hypothesis that was testable, but. I think that what happens physiologically is that when they taste something sweet, because if you want to demonstrate cribbing, give a horse a cube of sugar, mm -hmm. uh, when they taste something sweet, they release oxy um, opiates, mm -hmm. and which is true in rats and in babies and so on. And the opiates stimulate the cribbing, not the other way around, that the opiates are, that's why blocking the opiates will block cribbing. Okay. Uh, um, yeah. So that's my hypothesis. If you can keep them off of all sweet feed, they don't crib as much. Mm. And then of course there's a genetic. Yeah, uh, yeah. predisposition. Much more common in thoroughbreds. Um, 
I don't think they learn it from one another. No. Because um, Julie Albright did a survey thing and we said, okay, you have a horse that cribs. Did, did any horse come into your barn and start cribbing? Or did any horse start cribbing after this cribber came into your barn? And there were very few that said that. If I lecture to 100 people, one person will say, yes, that happened. Mm. Yeah. But the result is that, that many people can't board their cribbers because the owner of the barn is sure all the other horses will start doing it. But that yeah. does remind me, I have a senior thesis that somebody did uh, who did lots, tried lots of different diets uh, to see what effect they had on cribbing. And he didn't show much, so I didn't do anything with it. But maybe if I get bored, I'll 